Um, tonight we're, we are introducing our Pioneers for Change Award celebration to be held next June the 6th at the Bell TIFF Lightbox. Skills for Change is a leader in the development and delivery of programs and services for educated and experienced professionals who have immigrated to the GTA. Our goal is to provide the programs, training and support needed to help successfully integrate our clients into the Canadian workplace. Obviously Canada has been very successful by world standards in its immigration policies and results. Organizations like Skills for Change have been integral to this success and events like the Pioneers for Change celebration next June are an important, important part of this effort. Now I'd like to introduce you to our Executive Director, Cheryl May. As an organization, um, we've developed over the years relationships with donors and, and uh, uh, foundations and corporate sponsors. And, and this year there's been a real step up in our relationship with corporate sponsors. We just had an amazing event uh, at KPMG, close at the front here, um, <laughs> to remind me, um, sponsored by CIBC and, and uh, supported uh, by KPMG and hosted there, called Diversity at Work, where we explored the role of religion in the workplace, which was um, considered to be a really edgy topic, but I spoke um, to Omni Television today because there was, where Michael's presenting, there was a conference uh, put on by the Conference Board of Canada which touched on some of the same themes. So we really are at the forefront of identifying some of the areas that need to be explored uh, in the workplace to, to um, harness the incredible opportunity to, we have a skills shortage in Canada, we know that, probably everyone in this room is here because they understand that and know that the skills, that we have an incredible opportunity to harness the uh, innovation and, and talents of uh, people from other countries in Canada to move forward with, with a, new, a new Canada and a new um, economy for Canada. So we're a pretty small organization, but not insignificant. We have uh, 100 employees, so we're in a position to do a lot of work around testing uh, new ideas and moving them forward. And we see a real role for uh, Skills for Change, for, for the uh, kind of organization we are, to, to start to rapidly try and test uh, new ideas, to, to actually create innovation in the sector. There needs to be somewhere where ideas can be tested out and then adopted broadly across the sector. So if we're able to try something it works well, and we see that adopted across Ontario, across Canada, uh, across uh, even by JVS and Costi. We make incredible uh, strides in, in how services are being delivered. So we have a real uh, innovation agenda that we're launching tonight that um, is positioning uh, skills for change as somewhere where we can do that. And um, part of what's driving that agenda is in the. I've just been at Skills for Change for a year now, but in the year we've made incredible strides with technology. I really believe that uh, technology has a major role to play in, in this innovation and how we go forward. And uh, we are now seen as at the forefront of, uh, of technology in, in uh, the nonprofit sector. That's grounded in a legacy of innovation. People who um, people are familiar with Skills for Change over the years, I know many of you are here, uh, will know that Ratna Omnivar launched uh, Pioneer's New Pioneer Awards 20 years ago. And uh, that we were one of we were the first uh, organization to introduce mentoring. So this legacy of innovation is, is something that we really want to light a spark to, and uh, be able to make a real contribution uh, to our sector. So to talk about why we have um, we have the pleasure of, of Alex Dad, who has been a great champion uh, for Skills for Change for almost a decade and uh, has ha had a vision of Pioneers for Change for just about as long. And um, Alex is uh, probably going to talk for about 20 minutes. And uh, I think uh, probably three years ago, Alex and I talked for about 20 minutes, we've spoken longer since. But that 20 minutes has been served for me personally as you know, three years of inspiration. So get ready, because um, this, you know, this is, this is uh, really um, uh, something very important, and Alex is a, is a dear friend of Skills for Change, a friend of mine, a great colleague, and um, uh, I don't know if we've changed the slide, but we, we uh, see him, he's a physician, an educator, a researcher, and a public advocate, and if you look in your programs, there's about two and a half pages about what Alex has done. And that's the condensed version. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> There's a much thicker version as well. And so without really taking any more time, I just want to say thank you to everybody. It's great to have friends and, and supporters here tonight. And um, ask Alex to take it from here. I think this is a good opportunity for us, given the kind of event that we're enjoying together, to reflect about this. I'm Canadian, and I'm very proud to be a Canadian. The ability to get along. The ability to get along. So, <coughs> this will be part of my theme tonight. And, and this question <coughs> came to my head when I saw a cover of Time Now magazine a few years ago. And this was a very, 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 very interesting question. <coughs> what would happen if Canada disappeared? Would the world notice now? Today they would. Today they would. It says, would anyone notice if Canada disappeared? How would the, the world notice if we disappeared? The Canadians, not Canada, the Canadians. I go to places and I see <coughs> bind on the good reputation that we have. I go to Africa and say, come from Canada, people smile. I go to Latin America, people smile. I go to Europe, I'm harmless there. <laughs> I go to the Americas and say, how nice, okay? Do we deserve that reputation now? I was inspired, you see, by the multiculturalism a policy by Lalonde. He was a minister of health who, who supported a report in the 70s that you could read right now, and, and it would have made no difference. The, the, the issues we were talking about, determinants of health over 30 years ago, almost 40 years ago, that our health, what we enjoy now, is mostly a result of factors other than hospitals and doctors. It's our level of education, it's our wealth, it's our social capital. So, is it time for us to harness probably our greatest asset, which is our diversity? I became Canadian in the year, the year 2000. And I remember a room bigger than this. There were 64 nationalities represented there. And this judge, who spoke for a long time, <laughs> um, said, our diversity is what makes us strong. And we were living in, in Hamilton at the time. And my kids took Mandarin lessons, paid for by the government. And when I go around the world and say that my kids had Mandarin lessons in Canada, <coughs> and that they were free, people say, wow! <laughs> really? I said, yes! <laughs> so we have quite an interesting environment here, more than 200 different ethnocultural communities right now <coughs> coexisting. We have 6.1 million people, close to 20% of the population born outside Canada. And that was more than the population that Canada had in 1900 was 5.3 million people at that time. So now we have more people born outside in this country than the entire population in 1900. This is terrific. 1.1 million people came to Canada in the past decade, and 40% settled in the greater Toronto area. So we have a world within a city. English with an accent is the official language of Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why bother now? Why, why are we here? Why should we answer this call from Skills for Change? And I met this organization in the year 2002, and I didn't know I had known it for a couple of years because we had been working with volunteers and with, with alumni from Skills for Change to develop a project on uh, navigation of the health system for immigrants. And, and I didn't know that those wonderful people who were working as part of my team had been referred to us by this small non-for-profit organization that was called Skills for Change. In the year 2002, I, I, I am informed that I received the New Pioneers Award. And I have the opportunity to visit it. And I fell in love with the place. I know how many of you have been to Skills for Change. Okay, how many of you have not been to Skills for Change? How many of you are, I don't know, what kind of option I can give you? 80% response right here. Um, but those of you who have not been to Skills for Change should make the effort and, and visit the place. It's fine. She said, Dad, Dad, did you know that 18% of kids are poor in Canada? I didn't know. I don't know if you knew that. 
almost one of every five children in Canada could be regarded as poor, which here is science fiction compared with what okay, uh, happens in many other parts of the world. But by our standards, 18% of children are, are poor. But guess which are the most disadvantaged kids in this country? Aboriginal Say that? Aboriginal, Aboriginal First Nations. Aboriginal Aboriginal First Nations in terms of poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Immigrant children. So let's look at the data. And for those of you at the back, 27% of children with disabilities are poor in Canada. Are we nice? Are we nice? Are we nice? Okay. 33% of children in racialized families. We are using all these weird terms, racialized families. Okay, 33% of children of female one-parent families. 36% yeah? of children of Aboriginal identity. And look at this, 42% of children of recent immigrants. Yeah? Wow, we need this fresh blood here to offset the imbalance that we have created by living longer and reproducing less. And these kids from these new families that are coming here, making this country their home, full of hope. They sell everything when they get the landed immigrant status, celebrate and come here with great qualifications. With great qualifications. This is the picture for 2006 of Canadian-born people. 16% have a bachelor's degree or more. That shocked me. I thought that in a country like this, more people would have university degrees. Another shock for me. 16%, and in some numbers it's 20%. Okay? $64,000 average income, okay? and an employment rate 3.5%. This is data from the 2006 census. Okay, look at that. Look at those figures, and I read them so you can see them at the at the back. Look at new recent immigrants from 2001 to 2006. 42 percent university degrees. Average income 28,000. Okay, unemployment rate 12 percent, and we are not accounting here for underemployment. Half of the PhDs, half of the people who hold PhDs in Canada now were born outside Canada. And they are overrepresented amongst taxi drivers and pizza delivery people. Not that those are not respectable occupations, but they could be using those talents for something else. So we are creating a brain drain from other countries, and now we are turning it into a brain waste. Creating a lot of unnecessary suffering for a lot of families. The prevalence of depression, stress, and health problems that people develop here, documented. Within five years, people end up poorer and sicker than those they found here. And to make it here, you cannot be sicker, I can tell you. Yeah? So here we are tonight, trying to figure out ways in which we could support organizations like Kids for Change to enable us to build the Canada that we expect and that the next generation deserves. And even if we decide to do it for selfish reasons, I think it will be the right thing to do. So my proposition tonight, and, and the reason why I accept it, I'm very grateful uh, to, to play this role within the Pioneers for Change, and the reason why nine years ago, when I received the new Pioneers Award, which I was very grateful to, to receive from Skills for Change, I asked, the person who gave it to me, Sam Gasuli. I said, Sam, now what? And he said, what do you mean, now what? I said, now what? I get the award, I enjoy it. I said, no, no, now what? What are we going to do about this? And he said, what do you mean? I said, how many people have received this? He said, about 60. He said, have you ever got them together? No, how about if we get them together? Sure, let's do it. And we started getting people together. And tonight, I'm delighted to see many, many faces of, of new pioneer work recipients here with whom we have been trying to rally as many organizations and as many collectives as we have been able to and I'm so pleased okay, to be here tonight to see if now joining forces with other sectors of this incredibly privileged society we could do what 
this generation, which is the present, it's not the future anymore. Expect from us and deserve. Thank you very much. I really hope you have a good day. Simply put, Skills for Change goal is to engage others and to build partnerships that will improve efficiency and human potential. So tonight, I have the privilege of speaking after Alex, which is always the best privilege ever. <laughs> <laughs> the privilege of thanking CIBC, our presenting sponsor, for their long-standing uh, commitment and, and commitment to and partnership with uh, Skills for Change. CIBC's partnership with Skills for Change uh, is an extension of their true commitment to diversity. They were recognized as one of Canada's best employers for new Canadians and among Canada's best diversity employers. CIBC has been a New Pioneers Award sponsor since the inception of the event in 1993 and has been the lead sponsor since 1995. So we couldn't be more pleased to mark the 20th anniversary of the New Pioneers Awards and the launch of Pioneers for Change with this very committed partner. Together CIBC and Skills for Change are making an impact by improving the transition of newcomers into the Canadian workforce through programs such as Pioneers for Change, Mentor Palooza, which sounds like an awful lot of fun, <laughs> and diversity at work. Without the support of our corporate donors like CIBC, our work simply would not be possible. And Cheryl talked a little bit about innovation and some of the things that we want to do that we just don't have government funding for. And it's really important for us to be able to do those things so that we can change Canada and change the Canadian experience for new Canadians. So, on behalf of Skills for Change, I'd like to recognize those um, from CIBC who are here tonight and, of course, thank them and thank you all very, very much. Thank you. My name is Michael Bach and I'm the National Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for KPMG. For those of you who don't know, we're not a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you actually thought we were a radio station. Uh, no, we are the, uh, of course, a professional audit firm here in Canada and around the world. And uh, we are very honored to be uh, a friend of, of Skills for Change. Uh, KPMG is committed to diversity and inclusion in all its forms. We have also been named one of Canada's best diversity employers, Canada's best employers for new Canadians four years in a row. I don't like to brag. But we're the only firm that's won both awards all four years, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, we are very proud to be a supporter of Skills for Change, as we have been for several years now. And we continue to support Skills for Change as they move forward on a new journey around supporting individuals who choose to make Canada their home. As some of you know, I am very passionate about the, uh, the, the needs of people who choose this country as their home. When you look outside today, I often think people have made a wrong turn. Um, I, uh, I was, as I was listening to uh, Alex's speech, the one thing that really came to mind for me is what does it mean to be a Canadian? And I'm an eighth generation Canadian. My family did not come here on a boat. They came on here on the boat. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am no more Canadian than anyone who arrives on our shores today. I have an accent. And believe me, if I wasn't speaking English, I would be butchering someone's language. So I think, uh, and, and one of the things, I worked in a global role for several years, and it, very few people outside of Canada understand, or very few people in Canada understand, rather, that um, no one outside of Canada cares if you have Canadian experience. <laughs> People aren't sure we're still a country. So um, I, I really did relate with a lot of the things that you said. Um, KPMG gets involved with a few organizations, but we are very selective about who those organizations are, and we are proud of the relationship that we have with Skills for Change because of the great work that you do in our community. So this would not be an insider event. I do love that. It's very sexy. Um, I imagine this is just what like the Oscars are like. 
Um, but it would not be an insider event unless you got a sneak peek at what the future holds. I am pleased to have the honor to share with you a little bit of information about the first project of the Skills for Change Innovation Fund, the Immigrant Women Leadership Project, the Status of Women Community Fund. Immigrant women uh, represent approximately 50% of the overall client base of Skills for Change. Program counselors conduct over 7,000 assessments every year with immigrant women. Program counselors consistently report that immigrant women need more flexible and accommodating programs and services than immigrant men. Often immigrant women have, a place, uh, have to place priority on uh, settlement and family, and their timeline to employment is much longer than that of immigrant men. KBMG is, is very proud, as am I personally, of our partnership with Skills for Change, and knows that this important initiative will have an exceptionally positive impact on our community. Thank you very much. And if I may, yes. uh, the new Pioneer Award recipients from previous years, yes. would you please stand up? Yes. to Skills for Change and to offer our unconditional support uh, to the success of this new venture. So congratulations and thank you for what you have done for us.